As far as I can remember, my parents' marriage was not a happy one and was full of discord. The problems between them gradually accumulated and eventually led to the breakup of their marriage. Later, my father met a woman and formed a new relationship with her. Soon they were married. At the very beginning, my stepmother treated me well. She acted kindly toward me, which gave me some comfort. However, with the birth of my brother, I gradually felt a change in my stepmother's attitude toward me. She began to treat me more and more coldly and harshly. She focused more on taking care of my brother, and I began to feel neglected and rejected. This change made me feel very helpless. My father was often working in another city and I often had to face this unfriendly atmosphere alone. I felt that I had become redundant in the family and that no one really seemed to care about me. Sometimes, I would feel lonely and frustrated, not knowing how to cope with such a situation. I longed for the love and support of my family. This was a psychological torture for me. When I was nine years old, an incredible event happened that changed my life. That day, I became a victim of my stepmother's cruel behavior. At that time, I was playing outside with my younger brother. Suddenly, my brother tripped and fell on an uneven surface. When I reached his side, I saw him sitting on the ground with one hand holding his knee. His face wore a painful expression. I noticed a small cut on his hand, and bright red blood dripped down onto his palm. Although the wound was not serious, the sight of the blood made me feel worried. When I got home, my stepmother was very angry. She struck me wildly with a wooden stick. I dodged helplessly, but eventually I was knocked to the ground. My breathing stopped and I felt my consciousness fading. I was rushed to the nearest hospital where doctors immediately took emergency. Measures to try to get my heart beating again. In that room, time seemed to take an infinite amount of time. Despite the doctor's best efforts, my heart stopped beating again after a brief period of recovery. At that point, the doctors had to face reality and pronounced me dead. I stood by during the whole process and watched it all happen. At the moment my heart stopped beating, I felt a strange sense of peace and relief. All the pain and fear seemed to leave me. And I just felt a relief like I had never felt before. My life before felt like I was in hell. I had been forced to endure many cruelties and injustices. I was once forced to eat food off the ground. This inhumane treatment made me feel humiliated and helpless. I did not understand why my stepmother treated me so badly. Another time, my stepmother burned my right hand with a cigarette, leaving me with a permanent scar. At that moment, I felt endless pain and fear. There were many other similar incidents, each of which caused me physical and mental harm. I do not want to recall these experiences because they left me feeling fearful and desperate. When I left my body, I felt relief. The pain and suffering left me. Suddenly, I saw my father, who was standing in the hallway of the hospital. As I got closer, I noticed that my father and a doctor were arguing violently. I couldn't make out what they were arguing about. I tried to get closer to them trying to figure out what was going on. Just then, I heard a voice. The voice asked me, are you ready? I was confused and didn't know what it was referring to. I replied, ready for what? Who are you? I was curious and confused, not understanding why this voice was asking these questions. Then the voice went on to say that most people call him an angel or a guide. A man suddenly appeared in front of me, and he stood silently before me. I felt a holy atmosphere surrounding him, causing me to feel an involuntary sense of awe. Curiously, I asked, don't all angels have wings? 
why don't you have them? The man smiled and replied, who says angels must have wings? His voice was gentle but firm. He took me by the hand and led me out of the hospital. We came to a completely new environment. I was very surprised by this place. We were standing at the base of a huge plant, which was tall and magnificent. The leaves of the plant were constantly swaying, as if to welcome us. The leaves were golden and they shone brightly, giving the whole environment a mysterious and serene atmosphere. Not far from us, I saw some wonderful creatures. They were slender and taller than humans. Their faces were narrow, with elegant and delicate lines. They swam freely in the water. These creatures gave off a mysterious glow. We continued deeper and found more peculiar creatures. These creatures looked a little less evolved. They surrounded us. The colors on them were so peculiar that it was hard to describe them in words. This place was not illuminated by sunlight. However, these creatures seem to have found their way to survive in the darkness. They make a peculiar sound. They sing with these beautiful, high-pitched voices that travel through the water. I could hear the songs coming from other similar creatures in the distance, and these voices intertwined. Led by these creatures, we arrived at their home. The caves formed a complex underwater network. In the corners of the caves reside many tiny life forms. They grow in hard shells. They are slender and transparent, and they blend in with the caves to create a fantastical scene. In addition to tiny life forms, some caves are inhabited by huge and ancient creatures. They grow huge shells. These creatures move through the caves at a slow pace and they feed on the plants in the water. The angel reminded me that it was time to leave. Led by the angel, I came into the presence of God. I stood there and felt an intense love. This love was so pure that it surpassed any feeling I had ever experienced. God embraced me, and his arms were filled with endless love. He told me that he already knew the pain I had experienced before. I asked God why he had not prevented the violence from happening, why he had not intervened in the actions that were hurting me. He didn't answer my question directly. He held me tighter. His embrace conveyed endless comfort and solace, a feeling that I had always longed for inside. His love wrapped around me and it was unconditional. In his embrace, I no longer had to endure pain because his love made me feel truly relieved. I know that in his love, I will never feel alone or helpless again. God said to me, I know you want to stay here, away from pain and suffering, but you can't stay in this place just yet. He explained to me that I must return to the real world because my life is not over yet. There are still many experiences and missions waiting for me. I felt frustrated and helpless. I told God that I was afraid to go back, afraid of being hurt and tortured again. God assured me that He would always be with me. I began to cry sadly because leaving God's arms made me feel lost and afraid. God gave me one last hug and His love was close to me. His promise gave me the courage and strength to face the challenges ahead. With God's comfort, I gradually calmed down. The angel took my hand and led me back to the real world. We walked through the wall and came to the hospital room. I saw the doctors still trying to save my life. I saw my father standing anxiously in the hallway, his eyes full of worry and helplessness. The angel nodded to me, signaling me to be strong. I understood that I could no longer run away from reality. I had to get back into my body and face the challenges of life. The angel held my hand, and his presence made me feel very much at ease. I closed my eyes and slowly re-entered my body. 
When I opened my eyes, a group of doctors surrounded me. They were surprised to see my eyes open and shouted, he's awake. I felt the pulse of life beating again. I knew that God had given me a second life. During my recovery, a female police officer came to my room. The female officer told me that the doctor had reported what had happened to me to the police. I was both thankful and scared to hear this news. I didn't know what was going to happen next. The female officer sat on the edge of the bed and listened patiently to what had happened to me. I described to her the abuse my stepmother had inflicted on me. Then my stepmother was put in jail. Some time later, I received a letter from my stepmother. In the letter, she sincerely apologized to me, expressing her remorse and guilt. She admitted her mistake and expressed her hope that I could forgive her. However, I can't forgive her now. The psychological damage she has inflicted on me over the years is too deep and will take time to heal. Forgiving her is a long and complicated process. It requires me to truly come to terms with the hurt of the past and find inner peace. I needed more time to heal myself. My father also apologized to me sincerely. I understand my father's situation. I know he has been working hard to provide for us and has taken on a heavy load of responsibility and stress. He did not realize the extent of my stepmother's abuse. I didn't blame my father because I knew he had been hurt too. He felt guilty for his negligence. After I recovered, I decided to live with my grandfather. He gave me the feeling of being loved. Although this love could not surpass the love of God, it still made me feel very content and happy. Twenty-seven years have passed since this happened and I have a family and children of my own. My children grew up in a warm family environment. I have tried to teach them respect and tolerance for others and to understand that violence is not the way to solve problems. I am grateful for God's guidance and the company of angels. They gave me courage and helped me to overcome difficulties and find my strength. I have learned how to pass on this love. And incorporate it into my family and my life. I believe that everyone has the power to change their destiny and rebuild a happy life. Now, I feel a great sense of relief as I watch my own children grow up happily. I want to tell those of you who are enduring domestic violence that you are not alone. Do not let fear and shame plague you, you do not deserve any form of abuse. You have the right to live a healthy and free life. Domestic abuse is a crime and it should not be tolerated. Remember, you are not alone and you have the right to defend yourselves. Stand up and let the law be your shield and fight for your right to dignity and happiness.